Not all exercises are suitable for everyone. To reduce the risk to you, please consult your doctor before beginning this exercise program. Do not exercise if you are feeling at all unwell. This can be counterproductive if you have eaten a heavy meal in the last two hours, if you have been drinking alcohol, if you are in pain from an injury, consult your doctor first, as rest may be needed before you exercise, and always stop an exercise if it causes pain, if you are on painkillers, as it will mask any warning pains, if you are undergoing medical treatment or taking any drugs, you will need to consult your doctor first. Although many of these exercises are fine for use in pregnancy, we cannot recommend that you follow them, as we have not made this video with pregnancy in mind. Hi, welcome to Jerry Yoga. If you want to feel good about yourself, relax and feel healthier, this might be just the thing for you. Like most of us, I'm sure, fad dieting and manic exercising have never really worked for me. For years, I've searched for an answer to help me feel better about myself. Like most people, I've struggled with self-acceptance, especially when it came to my body shape. I got into yoga two years ago, and I was looking for another form of weight loss. And yes, it has helped me keep in shape, but yoga gives me so much more. Yoga means unity. Having a healthy mind and body is the key to feeling good about yourself. Yoga helps give life focus. It makes me feel both emotionally and physically fit. Yoga can relax and energize. It's medicinal and kind, but best of all, it works. Regardless of your shape or size, whether you're bendy or straight, yoga can work for you too. During this video, we're going to take you through a series of programs. You can do the whole video, but if you don't have time, just dip in and use the sections that suit you. Section one is a warm up to suit all abilities. Section two is a more advanced warm up, so please take it easy if you're a beginner. Eventually, you can just use sun exercise to get the body warm, but only when you become more familiar with it. It is always advisable to do some sort of warm up before you start section three, the postures. During the program, Tina will be demonstrating the beginner's version. So follow her if you're a little unsure about your ability. Remember, you should never feel uncomfortable in a pose. If you do, come out of that posture and relax. Yoga is not competitive. Please remember, never strain. It is also advisable not to practice on a full stomach, so do leave at least an hour after meals. The type of yoga that you'll be learning is Hatha yoga, which just means physical. As a teacher, I draw mainly from the Shivananda method, although I do draw from other techniques as well. The word yoga means union, the union of your mind and your body, which is why yoga is so personal. Imagine yoga as a big toolbox, which you can dip into whenever you feel the need. You can choose poses that calm, poses that provide energy, upliftment, and poses that relieve fatigue. Finally, a word on breathing. This really is the key to yoga. It will take a little time to become familiar with the postures, but don't forget to breathe. When the breath is calm, so is the mind. You must try breathing in and out of your nose unless I direct you differently. There are three basic methods. Tummy breathing, full breathing, and ujjayi, which is through the throat. You should do whichever one suits you. Let's start with tummy breathing. You inhale through the nose. The tummy expands. You exhale through the nose the tummy relaxes. Let's try that again, breathing in and out. Full breathing, 
full breath. Inhaling tummy. Ribs move sideways and chest rises. Exhaling chest relaxes. Exhaling ribs close. Exhaling tummy lowers. Once more, breathe in tummy. Ribs. Chest. Exhale chest. Ribs and tummy. And ujjayi breath. As you inhale, make the sound at the back of the throat. It helps to dip the chin into the chest a little bit. Make a mental note that this time is for you, physically and mentally. Find a quiet space where you won't be disturbed and enjoy. Okay, let's start. Okay, section one, the warm up. Should we have a go at the breathing lying down? Okay. Excellent. Place your head to the top of the mat, all the way down to the floor. Allow the legs to lengthen. And you'll need them hip width, so just open them a fraction. Good, okay. And your arms are gonna be lengthened to the floor, palms up. Good, and the back of the head. That means you're open to the universe. Exactly, yeah. open to the universe. To abundance. Good, and place the head, back of the head on the floor for me. Okay. And I would close the it's eyes. Yeah, it makes you quite kind of feel vulnerable doing that. So. Okay, the breathing will help. It'll help relax and calm you. Okay, remember your breathing is in and out through your nose, unless I say so. So let's start off with tummy breathing. As you inhale, allow the abdomen to expand. And as you exhale, allow the tummy to lower. If you need to place your hands on the tummy, do so. Breathing in, tummy expands. Jerry, you just stay there. Exhaling, tummy lowers. This is so good after like, I've come in from a busy day. My, heart, my mind is like bouncing. This is excellent to get me kind of settled. Yeah, the, the breathing brings you into the present moment. It's so important to be present. Yeah. We're not actually um, alive in the future or in the past. The only place we're truly alive is in the here and now, the present moment. So it centers you. That's what it's meaning by centered, grounding. It grounds you back to the present moment. So you're enjoying yourself. Also as well, this technique brings the energy lower down into the lungs. So it's much more healthier for the body rather than inhaling just into the chest. It brings it right down into the lower part of the lung. Okay, full breathing. Inhaling all the way up, tummy through the ribs, through the chest. Pause, exhale all the way down. Go nice and slowly with the breathing. You don't have to rush at all. Slower the better. Breathing in. And exhaling. Good, as you exhale, feel the body letting go. Relaxing a little bit more. Feel the mind letting go, letting go of your day. Sometimes when I first do this, my mind gets worse. Really? It, yeah, it kind of starts, to, you know, retaliating almost. But um, it kind of wears off after a while. Yeah, just keep the flow of the breath going. You just need to keep concentrating on the breathing. The mind will want to jump. It's like a monkey. It'll keep jumping, keep yeah. jumping. Just keep bringing it back to the breathing. Be persistent and eventually you'll win through. Or I'm so tired I might just fall asleep. Well, that's okay, but that's what you need, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, you win both ways. Just keep persisting. Okay, so you've got the two types of breathing technique. Tummy breathing, full breathing, and ujjayi breath, as I mentioned before, if you need it. What kind of breathing do I do? Ujjayi breathing, it's the one at the throat here. Fire breath. Yeah, that kind of really gets your t you feel like a warm feeling in your tummy. Exactly. It burns calories too, doesn't it? It does. Which I kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. let's start the warm up. Okay. So on your next inhalation, take the arms up and stretch backwards. Inhale, big stretch. 
flex or point the toes as you wish. Remember, yoga is your own union. It's how you feel, yeah? So if it doesn't feel good to do exactly this, remember, I'm just a guide. I'm just here to guide you. So you're stretching, stretching where you need to. You're a good guide, though. I'm one. You're very good. Yeah. Bring the knees into the chest, both of them. Exhale. Good. Tiny ball here and roll the back into the floor. This is excellent for any lower back problems. Yeah. Remember, keep the feet parallel, don't cross them so the hips are even. Exhaling, good, breathe in. Exhale your left leg long, all the way down to the floor. Nice and relaxed in the shoulders and let's circle our right ankle round. Good, round, get rid of the Rice Krispies. Round, <laughs> what? Well, just in case the feet pop, the ankles oh, right, pop. Okay. Don't worry if that happens, by the way. Round the other way. Good, round. Yeah, sometimes at the end of the day when I get in bed at night, my lower back really hurts. Does it? And this really releases it, doesn't yeah. it? It's a great one. It's a great one. Breathe in, left leg. Exhale, right leg. Good. And relax the right leg completely to the floor. Good. Nice, Tina. And rolling round. And round with the left foot. And round. Let's go the other way. Good. Nice and easy. Just warming up. Don't go too quickly. Round. And round. Breathe in. Take your right leg in towards the body. Okay. Open the knees. Hold on to where's comfortable. This is frog pose, bit of an odd posture, but very good for opening up the hips. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. And just rest here. You can roll the back here a little if you need to. Good, flow of breath in. If you need a full breath, take it. If tummy breathing suits you better now, take it. Good, close your knees back to the center. Take your arms shoulder height, palms down. Good. Turn your knees to the right side. If you're new to this program, my advice would be to stay in this posture, okay? Or if the energy is a little low, stay here. If you want to advance the pose, Jerry, go right ahead, extend the knees and legs outwards. Okay, flow of breath, inhale and exhale. Allow the body to relax down into the floor. I really like this my waist, I feel like it kind of makes it. It tone, is. Tone it is. It's lengthening the waist out. It's very good for all the internal organs the as well here. The love handles. The love handles. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong in love handles. Good. No, exactly. Something to grab hold of. Left. So not too big <laughs> love handles. <laughs> left. Left. Uh, looking towards your left hand. Got me all stuttering there. Looking towards the left hand. Good. Breathing in. And exhaling all the way down. Good. Bend your knees. Take yourself back to the center, think up and over. Breathe in and exhale all the way to the other side. Take your head towards the right hand. Good, remember if you need to keep the knees here, do. If not, extend the feet outwards. And just rest. Don't hold on to the posture. If you're tense in a posture, it gets a lot worse. You wanna breathe right into it. Make it organic. Good, bend your knees. Come back to the center, inhale. Okay, we're just gonna take the feet right up to the ceiling. Exhale, all the way up. Good, nice and long at the back of the knees, mm -hmm. more. Breathe in, and again, exhale, all the way up. Long legs, long, 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 and inhale, bend. Two more, exhale, think of pulling the tummy down a little bit. Good, inhale. Oh yeah, and don't be embarrassed if you do fart because everybody does it, okay? Yeah, it it's does. It's a real icebreaker. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Everything releases in yoga. Yeah. It's quite a... It happens. Exhaling all the way up. Good, and inhaling down. Okay, take the hands to the knees. Exhale your left leg long again. We're gonna repeat the spinal twist all the way over to your right side. Exhale. Again, if you need an easier option, focus on Tina. It's quite strong, this pose, actually. In fact, it's very strong. If you want to take your right arm over, take it shoulder up towards... You look at it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Have a look up towards it so you can keep the spiral going. It's very good for uh, rotation of the body. Uh -huh. It's like you're squeezing out all the kind of rubbish. negative rubbish from your day that's exactly. been stored into your body. You're like, you're like a damp cloth that's wiped the surface and now we're squeezing it over the... Yeah, wringing it out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good, come back to your center. Bring the knee into your chest. Okay, hamstrings. Go nice and easy on these. Hamstrings are quite strong muscles to stretch, so if you need to back away, do. Remember, you don't have to stay in it all the time. Lift the leg up, 
remember, if it's here, it's perfect. No problem. You have you have to start somewhere, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. When I first started yoga, I couldn't even touch my toes. I was so unflexible, and it just comes with time. It does, and breathe into the yeah. postures. So I can breathe get quite right competitive and think, I want to do it now. I want to do it perfect. But it's not about perfection. It's about progression. And you'll see progression slowly by just yeah. practicing. Just keep persisting. Remember, you have to go through this part. Yeah, totally. You have to do it. You have to do it to go through this place. I think like just doing it is, you know, exactly. is good, even if it's not you know, done perfectly. No, exactly. Progression, as you said. And if you want to take the head from the floor, maybe you could take the head towards the knee. Good. Bring the leg in towards the chest, cradling lotus. Nice, yummy pose here. Turn the knee out. Good. If it's comfy, bring the arm underneath. Bring the arm right underneath and rock. And it's like giving yourself a little bit of a cuddle. Because yeah, nice we all need that, I think. Yeah, a bit of a cuddle. Yeah. I read somewhere saying that all human beings that can't need that kind of contact. And if you can't get it from outside, just give it to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I love you. Cuddles. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. Good. And for a nice, simpler version for the leg, for the hip, again here. And relax all the way down. You guys stay here for me. Tell me what you're feeling like here now whilst you're relaxing on the floor. A bit fuzzy. A bit fuzzy? Yeah. How does the body feel? Right um, side? I'm, th I'm fizzy. You're fizzy? Yeah, I've still got my day going on. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Can you feel that the right side's slightly lower than the left? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. The reason being for this is that you've released the energy on that side of the body, the right side. Yeah. Um, in yoga, we call this prana, life force. In Chinese medicine, it's qi and you've released the energy, so it's flowing better on yeah. that side of the body, so it makes you feel healthier. Yeah, yeah, that does. <laughs> okay, let's go all the way out to the other side, so we're flowing on the left as well. Exhale, left leg in towards the body. Let's get this flowing a little bit. Exhale, left leg across the body. Again, look at Tina if you need a gentler version of this. And if you want hardcore, look at Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> No, nothing about yoga is hardcore, and that's what I love about it. Exactly. It's not competitive, is it? No, it's just the most gentle, loving thing you can do. Good. Come back to the centre. Inhale. Extend that leg towards the ceiling. Stretch it right up if you can. It doesn't matter where it goes. Here is just fine. Good. And if it goes a little higher, perfect. If it doesn't, no problem. Remember to keep the shoulders down the back. Yeah, yeah. I always have problems with my shoulders. Yeah. Got the world on them. Got the world. <laughs> Key for a song. <laughs> yeah. Good. And bringing the leg, opening, cradling lotus, and rocking gently back. You and might forth. find that, you know, that when during a yoga class it unleashes emotions. And my first yoga class, I cried. It's kind of it just kind of releases things. But I one thing's sure at the end of it, you always feel better. Always. Yeah, it's the focus on the breath. It's cleaning everything out of you. I always feel quite high. Yeah, exactly. It's a legal drug. Yeah, it's fantastic. And relax all the way down into your posture and rest. Enjoy. Good. Big stretch, arms above the head. Good. Give yourself a cuddle, a hug. Exhale, knees into the chest and come up to a seated posture. Okay. So, if you're comfortable sitting like this, you may choose this. If your knees aren't up for this, it's no problem at all. You might want to sit cross-legged on a chair. It's absolutely fine. The main point that you need to know is that the body is lengthened, so the lungs are open, so you can breathe properly and energise the body properly. So choose a posture that you're comfortable yeah. with. Yeah, I, I tell you what, it has really improved my posture yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of the poses that we'll get on, onto strengthen up the body so you hold yourself better. Yeah. yeah, and if you hold yourself better, you naturally feel you know, well, better about it, so you feel thinner, you feel yeah. more in shape. And your body, your, your breath is able to go through the body a lot easier as yeah. well. If you're like this, the breath can't energise yeah. you, it can't create health inside. So, so everything can flow better, yeah. Exactly. Okay, Jerry, we're going to do the lion now. Bra. Okay. So lion's pose, just a brief. A Before little... we do it, you tell them what. If you're having a really crappy day and you're like feeling really negative and angry, 
it's kind of letting it out. You might feel really silly doing it. I did that first, yeah. self-conscious. But it's kind of being five again. Yes, exactly. Which is good. And it's good for throats. It's good for sore throats. It's good for lifting up the muscles in the face and neck. So, you know what sore throat's about? Suppressed anger. Oh, really? There you go. Oh, okay. okay. Let's do it. Okay, three lions all together. So you breathe in, squeeze the face together, tight, 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 tight. Tongue out, eyes up. <sighs> keep going, keep going, keep exhaling, keep exhaling, keep exhaling, good. And again, breathe in. Good, keep the exhalation going. Exhale, tongue out, eyes up. Last one, breathe in. Exhale, tongue out, eyes up. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good, excellent. A little bit of palming, I think, now for our eyes. Yeah, it gives uh, energy to the eyes, a bit of sparkle back into the eyes. So rub the hands together briskly, a little bit of heat. We all need a bit of sparkle in our eyes. Yes, windows of the soul they are. And good for flirting. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Good point, yeah. good point. Okay, you're going to cup the hands over your high eyes even. And relax the shoulders and take three gentle breaths. Inhale. Inhale. And inhale. And as you breathe out, release the hands. Your eyes meant to be open then. No, they're closed with the hands over. Zing. Good. Okay, section two, sun warm-up. This is a more advanced warm-up, so take it easy. It's very important that you don't strain anything through this. Follow Tina for a slightly simpler option. Take it easy, and let's move into child's pose. Good, just another round of breath. Inhale. And exhale, melt into the floor. Place your hands forwards. Let's come up onto all fours. Hands onto knees. Inverted V, tuck the toes underneath you, breathe in. Exhale, lift the pelvis up, hips up, and release the heels down into the floor. Push the hands into the floor. Think of lengthening the spine away, away right up into the hips. Let's warm up the calves and ankles. Inhale, rise up onto the toes even. Exhale, heels down. And again, two more, breathe in, lift up the pelvis more. Good, Jerry, lift up the pelvis more. That's it, exhale, heels down. And once more, inhale, heels up. Exhale, heels down. Rest in child's pose if you need it. You're gonna lift your right leg behind you a few inches or several, all the way up. Keep the hips in parallel as much as possible. Try not to twist. Exhale, leg down. And left leg, inhale. Good, good, and exhale. We're gonna take your right leg between the hands. Tina, why don't you join us? Help it along if necessary. Good, inhale. This is a great stretch for the hip flexor here. Okay, place the hands on your knee. Release the foot if you need to, if it feels uncomfortable. If you need to back away, just lift up out of the body and stay here. This might be enough of a stretch for you. Relax the shoulders, nice and easy. This really gets you going in the morning. It does. Yeah, if you need a bit of energy. It does. This one's gonna really get you started. It does, it mm -hmm. really builds the energy, mm -hmm. this one. Tina, if you want to rest, rest in child's pose. Let's interlock our hands behind the back. Remember, if you need that sock, have a sock handy. Open up the chest. Open up the head. Look up a little bit. OK, your favourite. Let's breathe in crescent moon. Inhale. Lifting up. It doesn't matter if you're here. That's great. Good, no problem. Lifting right up through the waist. Good. Coming onto the side. Good, into the center. Go nice and easy on this. It's very strong for the inner thigh, okay? When I first started yoga, I was so unflexible. And someone that's never done it before might look at this and think, oh God, that's too much. But if you just keep practicing really gently, you don't have to do it full out. 
Yeah. It comes, it really does. Bring the leg forwards if you want a slightly easier option for yourself today, yeah? It's most important is that you don't strain muscles. Okay, we're going to travel all the way over to the other side. Tina, why don't you join us on the left foot? Good. And again, stretching. Bring the leg forward if you need to. Breathe into the posture. Exhale right down into this leg here. Let's turn ourselves to the other side. Okay, take the hands to the knee for me, Jerry. Good. Good, nice. And rest the shoulders. Relax. Don't hold any tension in the shoulders. And rest. Also, you don't want to be too flexy in this, too loose. So keep lifting up through the waist, through the tummy. Nice, Tina. And when you're ready, move on to the other side and rest in child's pose for me. Excellent. Take the hands behind your back. Interlock the fingers. Open up the chest. Look up. Everything goes up. Good. And take a big breath in. Crescent moon. Come forwards and up. And again, a wonderfully energizing pose, opening up all the centers. Good. Back away if you need to. Okay, hands to the floor for me. And you're gonna travel into the center. Travel all the way into the center. Take it easy. Take it easy, slightly odd this. Take it easy all the way, good. Tina, why don't you join us? You're right there, yeah? Good. And here, breathe in. Okay, we're gonna stand up now. Standing up, both feet to the floor, as comfortably as you can. Hold on to your elbows. If it's comfortable, relax. If the knees need to bend, bend the knees so you're not straining any muscles. Just let go. Yeah, just let go. Exhale right down into the posture. Breathe in. Exhale into the crown of the head. It's like bizarre way of saying it, but if you exhale, focus on the crown of the head. Close your eyes, it's easier. Breathe in and exhale down into the crown of the head. And you get a good head rush, it makes you feel high. Keep the head really heavy, like a limp rag doll. Back of the neck, exhale. Shoulder blades, arms, exhale. Should I juice up my legs there in it? Yeah, okay. you can, you can give a little energy to them. Because I find the more sometimes energy I put into something, the more energy I get back later. It's like powering up. Good. Relax your arms. If they go to the floor, fine. If they don't, doesn't matter. Soften the knees. Yeah, I could never even touch my toes. Can you believe that? It, it comes in time. It really does. The focus is the breath into the posture, and that'll help it move. We're going to curl all the way up. Good, curling all the way up, rolling through the vertebrae, all the way up, all the way up, and eventually the head stands on top of the spine, on top of the spine, and here we are. Good, okay, so I'm gonna take us into um, sun salutation now. This is a series of 12 postures linked together. Uh, it's, it's advanced, so my advice to you would be um, to focus on getting hold of the postures first, getting those underneath your belt, and then incorporating the breath into it. I think that's the most important thing. It comes with time, I think. It does, it? it does. Just practicing it, and then you're, it's like a little routine, you know. Exactly. And it raises the energy. So, like, you do ten rounds of this, you'll know it. <laughs> okay? Just three. Okay, so the first one we'll do... But sometimes you can do twenty, can't you? Yeah, oh, exactly, exactly. The first one we'll do nice and slow. Okay? Close your eyes, breathe in, draw your breath down into the soles of the feet, allow them to ground into the earth, a full breath, inhale, exhale, allow the fingertips to relax down into the ground, inhale, and allow the crown of your head to extend upwards so you get this energy going all the way up. And when you're ready, we're gonna start movements. Inhale, arms out to the side. Look up, stretch up. Exhale, prayer position. Good, inhale, look up, stretch up. Follow Tina, 
for a slightly simpler version. If you need to go backwards, backwards you can go, but make sure you keep the pelvis tucked, yeah, that you're not backwards like this. Okay, yeah, tuck the pelvis, think of squeezing the buttocks. And exhale, forwards, forwards, think of going up and over, stretch forwards, stretch forwards, all the way down to the floor. And eventually you're here. It doesn't matter if you're here, that's no problem at all. If you need to bend the knees, again, no problem. Everybody has to start somewhere. You're looking to have your fingertips and your toe tips in line. That's really important to remember. So fingertips, toe tips in line. Bend the knees if you need to. You're going to take your right leg back. Put the knee down. Inhale. You're going to take the other leg back into a posture called plank. Again, if you need a slightly simpler version, lift the pelvis up. Here's plank, very strong pose. Arms very are nice. strenuous, this yeah. one is. And make sure that you're not dropping down too much, yeah? Quite painful for the back. Lift the tummy. Okay, let's find our knees here. Find the knees. Release the toes. Exhale your chest to the floor. Try and take the elbows backwards. Inhale, cobra coming up. You can be low, no problem. Open the shoulders, tuck the toes. Push into the hands. If you need to find the knees, do. Exhale, inverted V. Good. OK, so you're going to repeat what you did, just coming back up. You're going to take the right leg forwards. Help it if necessary. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go. Inhale. Standing pose. Push from the back foot. Exhale. Repeating all the way back up. Stretch the hands forwards. Long, long fingers. Good, look backwards if you can. Exhale, forwards and down, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Fingertips, toe tips in line. Left leg goes back, bend the knees if you need to. Inhale, hold the breath in plank. If you need to breathe out, please do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Find your knees, release your toes. Exhale, so Jerry, next time you'll be doing a slightly more advanced version for that for me. Open up the chest, more, more. Exhale, inverted V. Left foot comes forwards. Help it if necessary. Inhale. Standing pose. Exhale. Good. Move forwards and up. Inhaling. And prayer position. Exhaling. Ooh. Ooh. How'd you feel? I feel hot, but it's good. Yeah, it's it nice does. hot. It does, it really warms the Got the, the motor body. running. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's go. Should we do a couple of yeah. rounds now? Keep it flowing? Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. So just keep it flowing. Prayer position at the beginning and at the end. Just follow. It's kind of saying thank you. Thank you. Son, I salute you. Son, I salute you. Okay, when you're ready, breathe in. Arms out to the side. Prayer position. Exhale. Good. Stretch up. Inhale. Good, stretch forwards, exhale. Doesn't matter where you go, remember, but fingertips, toe tips in line. Right leg, knee down, inhale. Look up, hold the breath in plank if it's comfortable. Jerry, full version for me. Knees, exhale, chest to the floor. Come up in cobra, just a little bit. Shoulders down, down. Exhale, inverted V. Right leg comes forwards, help it if necessary. And standing, exhale, head towards the knees. Stretch forwards and up, inhale, good. Up and over the waist, exhale, forwards, forwards, fingertips, toe tips in line, left leg, inhale. Knees, exhale. Inhale, open the chest, shoulders down, tuck the toes, exhale, left foot forwards. Inhaling, and standing, breathe out. This really gets your metabolism going, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Inhale. Good. We all know what that means, don't we? Exhale, all the way down, one more round. Good, nice, Tina. Right leg, inhale, knee down. I can see you out the corner of my eye, by the way. <laughs> Hold the breath in plank. Head. Yeah. Good. Exhale. Inhale. 
Exhale, right leg. I always forget what leg we're on. Yeah. That's why it's okay. I'm That's why I'm here. <laughs> Standing pose, exhale. Inhale, stretch forwards and up. Last half. We're almost there. All the way down. Breathe out. Left. Holding the breath. Exhale. In. Out. And sometimes Left. you can do this really quickly or really slow it down, can't you? Exactly. Left in. Out. In, coming forwards. It's by focusing on the movement, it just gets you really present and grounded. It kind of takes your mind out of what your everyday life is, isn't it? Good. Beautiful. And we're going to go into relaxation. Cool. OK? Excellent. All right. All the way down to the back. Resting. The heart rate rate will have been raised in that so it's important to slow the breathing down now when you're in relaxation and it's important to rest afterwards because all the enjoyment you're taking all the benefits from sun exercise yeah this is like the reward this is the you've reward. done your little bit and then you think ah and sun exercise is still working in your body right now so this is the beneficial part close your eyes and enjoy Section three, something we're calling Jerry's postures. <laughs> we're going to focus on some poses now. In yoga, you're working very deeply internally with all the organs, muscles, blood, which is why it makes you healthier from the inside out, which is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Inside job. Exactly. Not just focusing on what looks good externally. You're working deep, deep inside. Mm -hmm. Some of these postures are quite advanced. The first one is the headstand, king of the postures, king of the poses. But for now, we're just going to focus on dolphin. OK, so Tina, if you wouldn't mind going into dolphin for me. And Jerry, in a moment, I'll put you in a headstand. That eventually leads to the headstand. It does, right? yeah. Eventually, that'll lead to the headstand. But for now, we're just going to focus on dolphin, yeah? Cool. This will build into your headstand. Yeah, it, I mean, it took me absolutely ages, like over a year, to get to be able to do this. It does, and yeah. you need lots of time, lots yeah. of practice, a teacher to yeah. accompany yeah. you. It makes you kind of fizzy. I normally do it when I need, I don't know, a bit of a personality before I do an interview or something, quickly stand on my head. So. But this is a good option to Absolutely. build towards this. Yep, so, cool. Tina, if you wouldn't demonstrate for me, please, hands to your elbows. OK, take your hands into a fist. Good, come up onto the knees. I'd take the knees back a little bit so you've got... An more open posture. OK, take a breath in through your nose. Exhale, chin over your fist. Good. Inhale back. Good. Exhale forwards. Just keep doing this for me. Inhale back. So you're working underneath the armpits. Very important for the headstand eventually when you get there. And again, two more. Exhale. Good. It looks nice, huh? Yep. It's doing a great job. Exhale. Good. Tuck your toes underneath you, advancing it a little bit more now into the inverted V or dog pose. And again, keep the tummy lifted for me, Tina, so you're not sinking into the lower back. Breathe in. Exhale, chin over the fist. Good. Inhale. And again, exhale forwards. You might only be able to do two of these and relax. Yes, yeah, quality, not quantity. Exactly. Do a couple more for me, Tina, if you feel comfortable. Jerry, if you wouldn't mind going into the headstand for me. All righty. Exhale forwards. Good. Inhale and relax. Go into child's pose and rest there, Tina, for a moment. After you've had your relaxation, if you wouldn't mind going up against the wall. Good, Jerry. This looks nice. Again, a I very find good if I focus on like a little spot, it helps me keep my balance. Good. A, a really advanced posture. Okay, so I, my suggestion would be always to do this, this with a teacher. This is something more to aspire to. You know? Most definitely. Think of extending through the soles of the feet. Good. And when you're ready, coming back down nice and slowly and move into child's pose. And it puts the world into a different perspective. I don't know. Good.
to rest in child's pose, after dolphin rest in child's pose. And if you're familiar with the headstand, you've done it before. Again, rest in child's pose. Good, Tina, if you wouldn't mind going up against the wall for me. If you've done the headstand before, how many breaths do you recommend doing? Do you know what? It, to advance postures, you just hold them for longer. Yeah, yeah. just build up. Exactly, so, you yeah, know. I try and do like 10. Sometimes I can only do three. My teacher says to me that if you can stay up in it for three hours, you've conquered the uh, you've conquered the posture. Oh my God. I don't know whether about staying into a headstand for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so Tina, we're going to work on the shoulder stand. First of all, allow the legs to lengthen up the wall for me. This is your first option, so you're nice and relaxed. Relax the feet, Tina. Be nice and rested. This is a really calming posture, very good for draining the legs, getting all the blood flowing in another direction. And, and a good alternative if you've got your period, okay? So if you have your period... You're not meant to go upside down, are you? Exactly, not yeah. for very long, especially if you have a heavy yeah. period. Yeah. yeah. Good. And, and just, if you've got swollen ankles, that's good. It's a great one. It's a great one to do on aeroplanes if you can... Or pregnant yourself. women. Exactly, but not for too long. Okay. Good, and when you're ready, you're going to put the feet against the wall for me, Tina. Bend, just bend the knees, come right down, lower the pelvis down, good, that's it. Turn the palms down for me. Okay, nice and slowly, you're going to roll up, roll up through the pubic bone. Think of curling up, keep curling up, so you're building slowly. Remember, you can stay here, if that's enough, take your time. All of these are building blocks, lifting up a little bit more through the knees. Think of the energy going upwards. Take your hands to your back, you have to support the back. Good. Thumbs around the waist, fingers towards the spine, chin into the chest. Okay. And that's what stimulates the thyroid. Exactly, yeah. So it regulates the thyroid gland. So that's one of the benefits that you're gaining from this. Don't move the head in this posture. You can see that there's a lot of weight on the head and shoulders. Don't move the head, you just pull a muscle. If you want to roll down, you just roll out of this. I'll show that in a moment. Exactly, take your time. To advance the posture again, lengthen one leg up to the ceiling. You can take it a bit higher. There you go, Tina, this is nice. And then the blood flows in a different direction. Very good for any vein problems, yeah? My grandmother had varicose veins. Really? Something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you want to advance it again, you can take the other leg from the wall. Good, support the hands to the back. Give yourself strength in this position. Exactly. Tina's walking the hands down the back towards her neck area and taking the legs upwards. Good. This is nice. And if you've got big boobs, you might suffocate. I, when I had larger chest, I used to get suffocated, but, yeah. you know, it's worth it. You can, you can always... <laughs> it's worth it. You can always take the feet back to the wall. So, Tina, come back for me. One foot and the other foot. Place the hands down to the floor. So this would be a good option for anyone with slightly larger chest, yeah. so you didn't feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And roll down, vertebrae, 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 really slowly, curling, curling, take your time. That's it, that's what you want, that little bend, so you don't go down in blocks. Yeah. Roll all the way down. Nice that's and perfect. slowly, isn't it? When exactly, you nice yourself. and slowly, when you're, when you're new to this, nice and slowly. Good. And relax. You can relax the legs to the wall, or just relax the legs all the way up. And rest for the moment, turn the palms. Good. When you're ready to do that again, feel free. Mm -hmm. Jerry, why don't we do the one in the centre? A little bit more of an advanced option. Okay, so, legs long for me. Arms at the side of the body, palms down. Your arms are your levers, okay? So really push them into the floor. They're okay. your stability to come up. To do it in breath. In breath, come up. Inhale, good. So the bottom comes off the floor. Take the hands to your back. I find it skin on skin helps, but that get me out. Okay, good. Okay, so fingers towards the spine as you're doing perfect, thumbs around the waist. The lower down the hands go towards the uh, neck area, the higher up you get. Okay, so you start stimulating the thyroid more and more. Good, this is a nice posture. Naturally, you're using ujjayi breath because the chin is into the chest. Ujjayi breath is? Fire breathing, you know, this sound, this Darth Vader breath. Good. And you inhale into the tummy and exhale. That's the only place you can breathe into. This really works my stomach muscles, actually. Yeah. 
good. Think of the extension through the soles of the feet. Think of string attached to the soles of the feet like outwards. Flex little point. It really doesn't matter to start with. Just get lift up. That's it. If you're struggling in this posture, cross the feet. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a bit of a timeout. Here, break. come up a bit, a little bit for me. Think of just crossing the ankles. Just the ankles. Good. J that's it. So you squeeze the buttocks. I get it. Yeah, got it. Great. That's nice. And that'll give you that little bit extra of a lift. Good, un, un, twist the feet. Good, and just stay here, breathe. Good, nice, Tina. Your next posture is plow pose. Plow pose is... Should I do it? Perfect, take the legs behind you. One at a time. One at a time. Now, I, I find normally, if I do this in the morning, I find my back is, is not stiff. Yeah. But in the, you know, at dusk, you know, Five to seven, it kind of is easier. Well, you know, in the morning you're uh, longer, <laughs> but you're tighter. Okay. Yeah. So in the evening, everything's pulled out a little bit more. Yeah. I would say, if you're new to this, really focus on the shoulder stand first before you advanced into plow. But you could bring the knees into your forehead, mm -hmm. Tina, for me. Sometimes before I'm going out in an evening, I'm really tired. Instead of having a cup of coffee. Yeah. Or as well as a cup of coffee. Just stick my legs behind my head. Exactly. And then I'm away. That's all I have to do. A couple of breaths. That's cool. Okay, Tina, lengthen one foot to the floor tentatively. It doesn't have to go all the way down to the floor and bring it back up if you want to. You can just really relax into it, can't you? That's the, that's, you definitely need to relax into it. You don't want to hold on to it at all. And the other leg back for me, Tina. Good, and if you're comfortable, move into plow for me, both feet back. It's only if you're comfortable, you can always just stay in the ball. Okay, Jerry, you're just doing a little variation here. Move back into plow, the full plow posture. Lengthen the legs really long at the back. Place the hands to your spine. Good. Think of the tailbone going upwards. So think of lifting through the hips here. Yeah, that's it. Did you feel that lift? Mm hmm Good, so this is very good for the abdomen. Fresh supply of blood into that area. Still stimulating the thyroid gland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tina, when you're ready, move back into shoulder stand for me. Bring the knees into the forehead, lengthen one leg up. And for yourself, Jerry, lengthen one leg up into shoulder stand. Other benefits that I didn't mention before was the heart has a rest. Normally, we're up on our feet all the time, working incredibly hard. You're having a rest with the heart mm -hmm. now. Okay, very good for the digestive system because you tipped yourself upside down. Can I come down now? Yes, you can. Well, let's, let's move into bridge pose, okay. okay? So taking one leg downwards and downwards. Again, Jerry's linking these postures. It's very advanced to do this. Tina, thank you. Coming all the way down for me, rolling and have a rest. Okay, so bridge pose here. Good. Good for the bottom. Can you feel that? Mm-hmm. More like my cheeks are being, like, yeah. tweaked in. Yeah, yeah it's good, very good, and very good for the hip area. But if you ever feel any pain in the lower back, just stop. Any of these postures, just stop and relax. Put your yeah. knees into your chest, that Ex kind of eases exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. And remember, you're advancing the posture quite strongly here with the hands to the back. You could try it with the hands to the floor. Tina, why don't you come back to the middle of the room and just demonstrate half bridge posture for me? Good. Thank you. Good. Inhaling, exhaling. Keep the breath nice and even. Are you right to stay here for a few minutes? Mm -hmm. If you need to, move back into shoulder stand. Just go into the different variations. Or if you want to come down, just roll down. Good. Do you want to go back into shoulder stand? Okay. Go back into shoulder stand. If you're happy to stay there, stay there. Maybe we'll do some different arms in a moment. Okay. Okay, Tina. So this is your beginner's version to bridge pose, which was where Jerry was at a moment ago. So just bring the legs hip width for me, Tina. Okay, so you're gonna roll through the pelvis. Notice that little tuck there. Good, rolling up a little bit further. Good, use the hands into the back. Good, think of sending the energy away through the knees. Keep rolling up. This is half bridge when your knees, your hips, and your shoulders are in line. Use the hands and arms down the floor. Good, and inhale through the nose, tummy expands all the way up to the chest if you want. Exhale down. Good, never pushing, never straining. And when you roll down, you use the exhalation. Breathe in, Tina, for me. And as you exhale, relax the chest, soften the breastbone. Good, roll, keep the pubic bone high for me. 
Good, keep that roll, that's it. Keep it rolling so you get the spine going. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Good, knees into the chest. Exhale and rest there, Tina. Okay, Should I do Joe. candle pose? Candle pose, arms by the side of the body if you want. Again, take it easy. And then up. Mm -hmm. Good. Remember, this isn't a neck stand. Keep lifting onto the shoulders. Good, take the hands to your back. Okay, move into bridge pose nice and slowly. Take your time, take your time. Good, excellent. Make sure you've got weight on the points of the feet here. And length through the knees. Do you fancy wheel? I can do a wheel. Okay. Otherwise known as crab. Crab when pose. we were at school in about six. Okay. I think that was the last time I did it since I did yoga. Okay, go nice and easy into okay. this. This is a really advanced pose, so if you're not used to doing this. Yeah. It's very refreshing, really, when you... Fresh the spine, don't you? It does. Opens all the energy centers up. Okay, lifting up. But you'd be surprised how many, like, I don't know, old ladies can do this. <laughs> suddenly just, you know. Good. Think of the energy coming right through the tummy button, through the hips. Imagine these up strings. Up on toes or feet down? Well, it varies. You know, I, I would say if you can feel comfortable up on the toes, great. If it feels good, down on the heels. Remember, this is your yoga. Yeah, it's for your body, for the, how it feels today, right at this moment. Down. Come down. Good. Slow. Yeah. And bring the knees into the chest most definitely. Because you've really been curving yeah, the body. Really, yeah, if you get back ache, it just kind of releases it. Yeah. Stay there and just relax. Good. Now just hold on to the knees and just breathe into the back. Inhale. Exhale. And again. Inhale. Breathe into the back. Focus right down into the back. Exhale. Good. In. And out. You have a counter posture for all of these three postures. Shoulder stand, plow, and bridge. Your counter pose is the fishy fish, fish posture. Okay, so I'm just gonna demonstrate with Tina first and then come up onto the knees. So Tina, if you wouldn't mind lengthening the legs. You're gonna take your arms underneath the bottom, palms down. Arms really long, make sure they're long, otherwise you go up with the shoulders up round the ears and you get strangled by the collarbone. Not very nice. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna inhale through the chest, open up the shoulders, pop the crown of the head on the floor or thereabouts. Good, and breathe a full breath in and a full breath out. Coming up onto the knees for me. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do all alternative ones, I don't like that one. It always pulls my hair. So, and it's good to use options. Yeah, it's yeah. actually easier, this one. And there's nothing wrong in doing the easy one. No. It's any pride that gets in the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're releasing that, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. This is very good for opening up the shoulders as your one. Okay, okay so. Show you okay, so pop the fingertips behind you, full palm to the floor, open up the chest. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. If the head goes back and it's comfortable, great. If you're not comfy with the head like that, just bring chin to the chest. Not like that. Exactly. Okay. And just breathe. Take a full breath here. You're maximizing the benefit for the thyroid gland within this yeah. posture. And you're saving yourself a facelift. <laughs> Good. And when you're ready, bring the chin to the chest and roll down, relax in child's pose for a moment. Very good for breathing problems, this one. Both poses, because the lungs are really open, so you really breathe deep into this posture. If you ever feel dizzy in any of the poses, you just come right back out of them and rest. Tina, lift the head up. Good, bring the chin to the chest and roll down. Lovely transition. And rest. If you need to, Tina, bring the knees into the chest, only if you feel you're ready to do that or comfortable. Good. How are you feeling? Good, good actually. Excellent. Quite hot, warm from those um, postures. Yeah, they are very energizing. But the brilliant thing is, you can just pull one out and just you know use one when you need it. Like the toolbox that yeah. I mentioned. Yeah. Like that theory. Yeah. Just literally pull a posture out when you need to use yeah. one to energize, one to calm. OK, we're going to lie on the tummy. So, Tina, if you wouldn't mind placing your head at the front of the mat over there. In yoga, there are cycles. 
backward bend cycles, forward bend cycles, balancing postures, inverted cycles. These next two postures are backward bend cycles. They're there to strengthen the back, to create flexibility in the back. And they're very good for the abdomen, for massaging all the internal organs in that area. So very good for any ladies' problems. Cooing. Okay. okay, constipation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so turn the feet in towards each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is just a relaxation posture. Mm -hmm. Okay, and rest here for a moment if you needed to. Good, nice, Tina. Although you're lying on the tummy, you can take a full breath into the body. It doesn't restrict you. So inhale, tummy, ribs and chest if you can. And release it. Okay, we're going to do preparation for cobra work. You've already done cobra in sun exercise, but we're preparing the body for cobra. So I'd like you to place your hands down by the side of your body, palms down to the floor, forehead on the floor. Okay. To make it simpler, you keep the feet wide. To make it harder, you bring the feet together. So you choose an option which suits you today. Inhale and extend the head forwards and up. Inhale, push the hands into the floor. Good, and exhale forwards and down. Okay, you really want to create length, so stretch forwards and up. Inhale, coming up, coming up, coming up, and exhale. Good, nice, Tina. Stay here for another two, Tina, if you're comfortable. Jerry, hover the hands for me. We're just advancing the pose. Inhale, come up. Good, shoulder blades slide down the back. That's it, yes, exactly. Exhale, forwards and down. Think of lengthening forwards and down. Good, forehead to the floor. And again, forwards up, nose, chin, opening up the chest, and exhaling. So it's very good for the kidneys, this one, and you're working on the adrenal glands. So it's a very calming, balancing posture. I need that calming and balancing, <laughs> totally. Tina, when you're ready, just relax. One hand on top of the other, toes turn in. Jerry, just interlock the fingers behind your back for me. Okay, so we're going to do two like this. Just bring them right down by the bottom. Think of sending the uh, hands down towards the heels and you're going to come up. Inhale. Good, open up the shoulders. Shoulders, that's it. Exhale, forwards and down. Keep breathing for me. Inhale, this is your last one coming up. Good, good, good. More, a little more. Exhale. Good, just lastly, let's just do one cobra. Hands underneath the shoulders. Okay, so you're going to come forwards and up. Inhale. Good, that's much better with the shoulders. Good, open up the chest, and when you're ready, roll down, breathe in. Good, roll down. Tummy, chest, chin, nose and forehead. Let's do one more for luck, okay? You all right? Okay, yeah. Okay, coming forwards, nose, chin, chest, keep the shoulders down the back, don't let them pop. Good, much better. Wings in, so your elbows are your wings, that's it. Good, lift up the tummy so you're not sinking into the lower back. And when you're ready, exhale, lower the tummy. It's really good for someone forward. like me that's always got our shoulders hunched. It's very good for opening up the chest. Yeah, so if you're stuck mm. in an office all day, it's very good to open up the chest. Yeah. And relax. Take one hand on top of the other, turn the toes in towards each other and have a rest for a moment. So you've done a lot of work for the lower back here. Mm -hmm. Right up at my hands. Just take them one, to, one on top of each other. Good, okay. and just rest for a moment. Pretend you're sunbathing. In some lovely country, lo a lovely hot climate. Um, Costa del something, yeah. Okay, so just breathing here. Slow the breath down a little bit more. Remember, you don't have to continually breathe. As you inhale, you're bringing light and energy into the body. And as you exhale, you're letting go, letting go of any tensions, any negativity. You're breathing in. In with love, out with hate. Exactly. In with faith, out with fear. Good. In with positivity. Yeah, out with crap. <laughs> okay, bow pose. Tina, if you wouldn't mind showing anyone that's new to this. So I would take the uh, right hand forwards, actually, for me, and take the left hand towards the left ankle. Good. Okay, and Jerry, you're going to do the full posture for me. Take hold of both ankles. The full Monty. The full Monty, please. Okay, so Tina, when you're ready, come up on the in-breath, go down on the out-breath. You're lifting up. Good, shoulders open. Good, nice. And exhale down for me. Do one more on this side. It doesn't matter if you only come an inch. When you're ready, Jerry, inhaling, coming up, bow pose. Good, lift the feet up. Yeah, lovely. Good. Yeah, this has got much better. Knees upwards. And exhaling, coming down. Tina, swap legs for me. 
up again. Yes, please. Inhaling, Tina, just come up a little fraction. Don't come up too much. Just come up just a little way. That's enough there. Good. Exhale, come down. Jerry, do one more for me. And inhale, come up, Tina. Good. Lifting up. Good. Now breathe here. Breathe. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. So you're rocking a little bit with the breath, massaging the abdomen. Okay, it's very good for the shoulders, very good for the hips, the buttocks. And rest, Tina, rest, Jerry, good. Excellent, have a relax. <laughs> good, turn the toes in towards each other. Good, rest. Inhaling. Exhaling. Good, nice and peaceful, breathing in. And as you exhale, allow the body just to relax. Dissolve yourself into the floor. Really rest. This is your resting time now to rejuvenate the body. So completely switch off and relax. Good. Move into child's pose for me. Tina, Jerry. If you find that the backward bend cycle, cobra work and bow work, has made the back feel a little bit uncomfortable, you can use child's pose for a relaxation. You don't have to lie on the tummy as I've suggested. Remember, I'm just guiding you through this. So you listen to how your body's feeling on that day and respond to that. That's your yoga, that's your union, union of your own mind, as I've mentioned, your own body. Okay, spinal twist work. So. I'm going to come and do this one with you. Tina, when you're really ready, fun. rolling you can just up. just do this when you're watching TV. Yeah. It's great. It's great. OK. Tina, if you wouldn't mind taking the left leg forwards and crossing the right leg over the body. OK, so we're going to relax onto the left cheek. OK, we're going to bring the right leg across the body, place the right sole of the foot in the floor, and you want to find both sit bones on the floor. You don't want to be tilted up, otherwise the pelvis is wonky. Both so cheeks on the floor. Both cheeks on the floor. OK, good. You're going to take your right arm behind the body, right in the centre of the back where the spine is. OK, if the palm goes right to the floor, great. If it doesn't, no worries. You're going to inhale, left arm up and over. So just pull it upwards and exhale across the body. So you're rotating the vertebrae, rotating the spine. Keep the head moving over the right shoulder if it's comfortable. The breathing will become a little bit more shallow now just because of the posture that you're in. I've got to try and keep my back straight, yeah? Definitely. You don't want to allow the pelvis to tilt in this posture. You're building, so keep prompting yourself, prompting yourself, prompting yourself until eventually it feels comfortable to sit right up on the bones. How does it feel? Good. OK, let's come out of this one. Stretch your left arm up. And exhale. Other side? Yeah. OK, so you're sitting on the right cheek. You've brought the left leg around the body. Both hip equal, both sit bones into the floor. Left arm behind you. Again, prompt the posture. And is my foot flat on the floor like that? Up. Yeah, definitely flat, sole down. OK. And inhaling, right arm up. And across the body. Good. Have a look over the left shoulder for me. So it's great for your posture, isn't it? It is a really good one. And it's a good one to wring out everything. Yes. Greasing out the rubbish of the day. And that person being annoying, you just get it out. A dirty dishcloth. Yeah. Because they say a lot of people will hold their emotion in their tummy. That's true. Spine. Yeah, and it's just getting rid of it. OK, so you could change the arms in this posture. You could have the arm long. OK, keep looking round to the back. Good. Or you could try high five. High high five. High five. High five. Good. Or if you've done yoga for a few years, yeah. you can uh, pop your hand through. Bind it. Would you mind binding it for me, Jerry? I'm I just going to come back it. out. Good. That's nice. And again, think of opening up the shoulders. Good, Tina, coming up and out of this pose. And exhale. But this is something to work towards. Good. I couldn't reach at first, so 
Yeah, just Good. doing that is enough. And come up and out of it, inhaling. Good. And exhaling. Excellent. Okay, let's go into crow, balancing okay. posture. Bit of fun. Take your time. Again, another advanced pose. Yeah. Very good for concentration. Yeah, and confidence. Yeah. And I think the great thing about it is fun, is the point. Exactly. You know, you need, everyone needs a little bit of fun. Kids love this one. Okay, you must be really careful though. I would put a cushion in front of you or do it on a carpeted floor because the floor is hard, okay? So, take your time. It's good doing flesh on flesh. Yeah. So I get a bit of leg out. Keep a point of focus, so you might choose something, a ring or a cushion in front of you. You've got three points, like a triangle, two being your hands, and the third point, as I've suggested, a ring or a cushion. You're going to take the arms on the inside of the legs, so where the crease is of the knee. You're going to be above the elbow joint, okay? And the hands are a little bit turned inward, so you're following the line of the arm. Focus forwards. Okay, so you're going to lift up very gently through the pelvis. Take your time. Take your time to travel forwards. Keep the eyes looking forwards. If you look underneath, normally you could fall a little. Take your time. Okay, so keep the toes on the floor for a simpler version to start with. Mine are off. It's absolutely fine You're doing the advanced version. It takes a long time to get into this for some people. So you could, as Tina's uh, suggesting, taking one foot off the floor. Just tentatively testing the balance. Good, and think of pushing. Oh. Okay, next time, when you're ready, Tina, you can come down and rest. If you do it once more for me, Jerry, yeah. do you mind? Yeah. Good, fingertips flex. Open. Do one foot at a time. Yeah, one foot at a time. Now think of pushing into the hands, push down away from the body. That's it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> Good for... And they're go. just going to headstand. They're going to headstand there. Yeah. Good, nice. Okay. okay, have a rest. It all goes wrong because you're under child pose. <laughs> Forget about it. And just rest. Okay, relax. So what I was going to suggest was if you get into crow, you think of pushing away. That would give you a little bit more balance, yeah. pushing away. All right. Okay. Don't do that one at home. <laughs> Tina, if you wouldn't mind joining, we're going to be standing up. A couple more poses. So let's turn this way, facing forwards. Standing forward bend, okay? Done this in sun exercise already. So let's go right into it. Inhale. Good, forwards and down. Exhale. So you're getting a good stretch through the hamstrings, through the back. Remember, it doesn't matter where you are. Eventually in time, the hands will move down to the floor. To help pull the body down, hold on to the elbows. Allow the crown of the head to relax. And now breathe. Shall I energize my legs if I pull them up? No. Yeah, give them a little energy. Although it's not important. If you're feeling that the balance isn't quite with you, then you might need a little bit of stability, so energize the legs a little. Meaning lift the kneecaps a bit, just lift up into the thighs. Think of exhaling out into the crown of the head. Close your eyes. And as you breathe out, focus on the crown of the head. Breathe out the back of your neck. Breathe out your elbows. Good, stay down there, breathe out between the shoulder blades. Breathe out, allow the rib cage to drop. That's it, that's what you want, that letting go feeling. If the knees are bent, absolutely no problem. Exhale, right into the lower back. Your toes do look pretty. Thank you. For some more options here, you can interlock the first finger around your large toe. Uh -huh. And sort of pull yourself inwards gently. Even if the legs are bent, that's absolutely no problem. It's really lovely to see progression in yourself. Because, it is. Yeah. It's very inspiring. Yeah, yourself, totally. It? It's like when you're a child and you learn to do a roly-poly. And with know. yoga, sorry, it, it, with yoga it yeah. works very quickly, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, totally, because yeah. I could never touch my toes. And when you're ready, relax the arms, stretch forwards. 
when you're ready, Tina. In, like how we hey come in. out of sun. Exactly. Coming all the way up and just allow the arms to rest at the side of the body. Sometimes being upside down can make you feel a little bit dizzy, so just relax if you need to go down to the floor, rest, mm. do. Yeah. It's a nice dizzy though. A nice sort of like, mm. Mm. Okay, my favorite posture, triangle pose to finish with. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna face the front. Okay. Okay, your feet are gonna be about three and a half foot apart. Best way to get into it is a little jump. Okay. Feet are in parallel. Make sure that they're in line across so you haven't got one foot forwards. That's really important, otherwise the hips are all wonky. Your hip bones, think of the Belisha beacons on the front of your hip bones. They don't move at all through this. You need to keep the hips completely straight. This is very good for the waist, pulling in the waist. It's very good for bending the spine. Again, we're bending the spine this way. Before we were bending it forwards, cobra, bending it backwards. So we're doing a little lateral bend for the spine. Good to get a tone waist. Oh. Yeah, definitely. Sucking it all in. And very good for the um, kidneys. Very good for uh, energizing the kid kidneys. So you're gonna turn your right foot out 90 degrees. Have a look to see whether your heel is on the inside of your other foot. So you might need to bring it forward a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay. And you're going to just inch your left foot, your left heel back a tiny bit here. And again, notice that the hips haven't twisted. Bring them forwards. Inhale your arms out to the side. I have to really remember to do that about the hips because I tend to swing. Yeah. So yeah, I have to and, remind myself. And, and don't bring the arms too high, yeah? Shoulder height. Breathe in. Release the hips to your left. Breathe in, stretch. Breathe out all the way down. Remember, it doesn't have to go too far. All the way down, keep the hips open. Back of the hand against the leg. Look up at that left arm. If it's not comfortable looking up, just look down to the you foot. Hit a spot and that will help your balance. Exactly. And staying here for me, please. And that energise my legs, yeah? Definitely, to Leg give you more stability. Yeah. Whenever you're doing standing postures, give the legs a bit of energy. Good, so keep thinking of opening up this hip, exactly. Use the pressure on the back of this hand here to open up Squash the shoulder. Squash against each other. Exactly, so you get that pressure. And then think of strings attached to the fingers lengthening you, lengthening you to give you height. Good. So I find that this posture gives you a mental stability as well, as well as Do physical, you? yeah. Good. To kind of really ground you. And when you're ready, inhale coming up for me, Tina. And exhale, both feet turn the other in. other side. And relax, yeah. Good, okay. Let's go on to the other side. Left foot turns out, 90 degrees. Remember, have a look where that middle of the foot is. Yeah. Come forwards. And the other foot's got to mean slight, like a yep. tiny little bit. Turn the heel back a smidge. Okay. Inhale, arms out to the side. Exhale, release your hips over to your right. Good, inhale, stretch across. Exhale, tip the hands, turn the palms forward and tip down, tip down, so you're flat as a pancake. You don't want to be forwards this way. As you're tipping down, where's my eye line? Just outward. Uh, upwards, oh, upwards right. if you can, or downwards, yeah? So when your shoulders open, yeah? Definitely. And you don't want to be tipping forwards or too far back. You want to be as flat as a pancake, so almost lifted through the waist. And sometimes I really wobble when I do it, it just depends. Again, it's what how I'm feeling, yeah. You can kind of judge how you're doing in your day, really, from the yeah, postures. Exactly. And again, strings attached towards the fingers and upwards. This is nice. And again, think of opening up that hip just a smidge more. Nice, I'm quite grounded today. Good, that's nice. And Tina, lengthening, lengthening, lengthening. Good, yes, that extra inch is what you're looking for. And the legs are energized and coming up and out of it. And exhale, turn the feet back into parallel. We're just going to widen the feet a little bit now. Okay, warrior pose. Oh, this is my favorite. Okay. Yeah, hurrah. <laughs> peaceful warriors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The way of a peaceful warrior. Okay, turn the right foot out 90 degrees. So you've opened the legs a little bit wider now. What you're doing is very strong for the leg, this one. Okay, strong for the thigh. So when you need to, just come right out of it. Keep the hips to your front and keep them in line with each other. You don't want the pelvis to tilt, like in the last section. So you're gonna bend down onto the front leg. Good, just a little 
higher up for me, Tina, if that's comfortable. Perfect. And look over the front hand. So not too much pressure on that knee to keep the energy still in your waist from the bottom. Exactly, yeah. Keep lifting upwards. It's really important that you stay upright in this posture rather than collapsed. Think of the energy through the crown of the head. You can always go lower if you want to. Is yeah. that more intense? It is more intense, yeah. Okay. And again, what tends to happen is a little bit Sticking like Sticking your bottom out. Exactly. So, so you really want to keep it underneath. Uh -huh. Keep the hip bones in line with each other. Uh -huh. And look over that front hand. It's important to keep the focus. Black focus. Mm-hmm. Your spot. Of course, you can come right back out of it. It's strong for the thigh, yeah? But great for the thigh. But great for the thigh. Thighs of steel. Good. And make sure the back of the leg isn't bending. Of course, you're twisting okay. the knee. And keep the pressure... Sort of like pull up. Exactly. Keep the pressure on the outside of that foot so it's not like this. You can always stay upright, and when we're ready, come out of it. Turn the feet into parallel. Take the hands on the hips. Breathe in. Stretch forwards. Stretch forwards and down, and relax. And this will just release the back a little bit. And release any anger or tension. Yeah. So you up. can take the path of being a peaceful warrior. Kill with kindness instead. <laughs> there you go. And it doesn't matter if you're here. It doesn't matter if your knees bend. Good. Just, just flop. Yeah, just flop like a rag doll. Breathe out, exhale, and allow everything to drop. Breathe in, and again, exhale, allow it to drop more. Heavy head, arms, if you want to hold on to elbows, perfect, as you're doing. Even if you wanted to get a stretch going, you could hold on to the ankles and pull yourself gently through. And when you're ready, rolling up slowly, you can soften the knees if the uh, legs are quite wide. Yeah, sometimes my legs lock. Yeah. So I kind of have to... Yeah, roll up and you're just going to move the legs a little bit wider. Good, make sure that leg's parallel, turn towards that front leg. Keep the hips open and bending down into warrior. Knee over the toe. Make sure your knee is over the toe so it's not in this. For each position that you do, how, how many rough, would you say, how many breaths to do in, you know, if you I I would say to, to begin with, yeah. if you can hold it for three, three or four inhalations, uh -huh. exhalations. Yeah. You by yourself. Yeah. And then just keep building it up. Good. Remember to soften the shoulders. You don't want the shoulders to be up around the ears. And hips facing front. Yeah, as hips much are as facing can. front, open to the front. Bottom under. Yeah, exactly. The temptation will be like this to keep the hip up. So you almost want to flatten it down into the socket and energize right down through to the fingers yeah keep the energy going right through to the fingertips and also exhale right down into the feet as well that will keep you grounded and when you're ready come out and up turn the feet into parallel again hands on the hips breathe in exhale forwards and down and relax I think one would be so surprised, the power of the breath. When, when I do that, I just feel so energized and I can almost feel like I'm, my metabolism just going. Yeah, when you focus on your breathing, your mind becomes steady. If your breath is um, irregular, then the mind is quite sc scattered, mm -hmm. usually. So it's a good tip when you've had a busy day and the mind's quite scattered, then just take a quiet moment and focus on the breath, mm -hmm. slow it right down, and it brings you back to that peaceful, calm place. And when you're ready, soften the knees and rolling up. Good. And bring one leg in, one leg in. Mm, good. Oh, lovely. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's interlock the hands behind the back just briefly. If it's not comfortable, just take the arms behind you. I like this. Just to open up the chest, so just so we've gone in a different direction. Good. Okay, we're going to start on tree posture now. It's a balancing pose. Ah, uh -huh. tree. Tree pose. Let's go and hug a tree. <laughs> Okay, so we've done a balancing posture on our hands in the last section, crow pose. This one is on our feet. 
you have to imagine your foot is huge because that's your platform, okay? So when you're ready, you're starting off in parallel, completely parallel, no turnout at all. And you're gonna transfer your weight very slowly onto your right foot and leg. So from being central onto the right foot. For a beginner, my suggestion would be on the side of the calf. For somebody a little bit more advanced, on the side of the thigh. And again, Jerry, if you wanted to try the lotus one, you could do, but again, it's advancing it right up here. I think I'll do the medium one. Do the medium one. Okay, yeah. but never on the side of the knee. Remember, the knees are joint, and we love our knees. Okay, so here we go. All right with that, Tina? And that's an in-breath. Yeah. Stepping into it, transferring the weight carefully. Good. And sometimes flesh on flesh sticks better. So you'll see when you get there. I sometimes find when I do this, some days I just completely wobble. Other days, you know, can do it. It's uh, kind of a reflection of how you feel, isn't it? Yeah, I was just about to say that. It is how the mind is. It's all right. <laughs> mind reading. OK, so hands are in prayer position by the heart centre where the breastbone is. Look at a spot. Focus on that. Don't allow the eyes to waver. And you're breathing. Can I take my arms up as well? So. You can definitely, that's advancing the pose. So you can take the arms upwards. Ooh, that's kind of tricky. Keep thinking of lifting through the waist and tummy, yeah? Don't allow yourself to sit in the posture. Keep lengthening through the knee, energize the leg. Imagine the foot's huge, like a tree that you've got roots going downwards as you breathe out. Think of rooting the foot into the floor. To make it even harder, mm -hmm. you could try with the eyes closed. Maybe oh. take the hands into prayer position first, Jerry, right into the center here, and then try it with the eyes closed. That is so difficult. It's so amazing. Just keep thinking of your stomach here. I really wobble when I do it like that. Yeah, remember trees move though, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm blowing <laughs> in the wind. Blowing in the wind. Okay, down into parallel. And onto the other side. Yeah. Okay. Good. And lifting if you need to, help it along. Hands into prayer position. Make I'm sure you. I'm going to try a lotus this side, so okay. Yeah, that's fine. Do that, I'm not going to imbalance myself. Try and keep the hips aligned. You don't want them to be tipped. Keep the hips aligned, open up out of the waist. Hands into prayer position. And breathe. Perhaps take four rounds of breath. Good. Okay, this, okay. Is, this is nice. My suggestion would be to try and drop the tailbone down a little bit. At the moment, what's happening is, is that you're a little bit tucked like that. Uh -huh. So you're pushing into the lower back. So just think of pulling the tummy inwards and upwards a little bit. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Can you feel that tiny bit? Yeah, my foot's slipping now. Try. <laughs> oh, dear. Good. Lovely, Tina. And when you're ready, lifting the arms above the head, inhaling. Good. And lengthen the arms, lengthen the arms. Even if the hands need to separate, that's fine. Good, so you can get a nice length through the arms, through the shoulders, the elbows. Preposition for me into the chest. And exhale, foot to the floor. Mm, namaste, thank namaste. you. Namaste, good. Okay, we're gonna go and have a relax. Excellent. All the way down to the back, rest. Well deserved. Well it's deserved. the reward, relaxation. All the way down to the back and have a relax. Legs hip width, arms turn to the ceiling. Mm. And close your eyes, enjoy. Final section, relaxation. It's really important to take time at the end of your program to relax. I'm gonna guide you through some techniques to aid you to a relaxed state of mind and body. Try and keep concentrated throughout this and use the breathing to, again, aid you to a restful place. 
allow the focus back onto your breathing, inhaling gently through the nose, tummy rises, exhaling, tummy relaxes. Choose a breath that suits you. It could be the full breathing at this point if you needed it. Alternatively, tummy breathing or gentle ujjayi breath, the fire breath. I'd like you to lift your right leg an inch from the floor. Just an inch, feel the whole leg tense and heavy and relaxes. And the left leg an inch from the floor. Feel the whole thigh, leg tense, tense and relax. Squeeze the buttocks, push the pubic bone forward tighter. Squeeze the buttocks tighter, lift them off the floor and relax. Breathe into your chest, lift your chest from the floor, think of fish posture gently and relax the back. Inhale, take your shoulders to your ears, right up to the ears and relax them away from the body. Take each of your hands into a fist, lengthen your elbows and lift your arms an inch half an inch if need be, feel the whole weight of your arms, flex your hands out, flex the fingers out and relax. Lion's pose, a gentle one, breathe in, squeeze the face together, exhale, tongue out, eyes up, good and relax. like you now to think about guiding your breath down into different areas I suggest. Close your eyes, focus on the weight on your heels. Feel the weight of your heels on the floor. Just notice it, just be aware. Take a breath in and exhale right down into the heels, feel them dropping, dropping down into your floor. Take a breath in and exhale down into the toes, feel the toes relaxing sideways. And in your own mind now, repeating quietly, my feet are relaxed. Breathe out into your calves, allow the muscle to soften and feel the calf releasing in your mind repeating my calves are relaxed allow your knees to soften exhale into the knees my knees are relaxed thighs to soften my thighs relax in your own mind try if you can to visualize your pelvic girdle that large bone around try and see it in your mind and as you breathe out, allow it to sink 
a little more, a little more into the floor. Allow the floor to hold your weight in relaxation. You don't have to hold on to anything now. You can totally let go. You're safe to relax. My pelvis is relaxed. Take a deep breath, as deep as is comfortable. And exhale, soften the chest, soften the ribs. Soften the tummy, my torso is relaxed, breathe out across the collarbones and into the shoulders, allow the shoulders to release, letting go, letting go of the upper back. My shoulders are relaxed. Exhale down your arms. Exhale down your arms, heavy elbows, wrists, hands are limp fingers curling naturally, my arms and hands relax, enjoy how the neck is feeling, serenity pouring from the neck, my neck is relaxed. the weight of your head on the floor. Enjoy, allow the weight of the head to rest. Allow the floor to hold you completely. Allow the jaw to soften, the back of the throat and tongue to flatten, open and rest the cheeks to soften, the back of the eyes rest, between your eyebrows you exhale, imagine someone smoothing your forehead, my face and head relaxes. Well done. I hope you feel good after that. Yoga's not easy, but give it a chance. Keep at it and you'll soon see and feel the results. I think life in general for me is not you know, it's not at the end of the day fairy tale, and you know everyone likes to. I, I know I have always tried to sort of seek out happiness, and um, you know strive for it. And actually, these days, if I can get the content, that's enough. Rather than exhilaration, I'd, I I used to swing from exhilaration to complete depression, and um, you know if I could just get that happy medium somewhere in between, just get through the day without any drama, then, then that's good enough for me, I think. Um, but life in general is good, I'm really grateful. I think that's the blessing in life, if you can really, you know, be present for the day, instead of projecting forward, thinking, what can I, what have I got to do tomorrow? What have I got to do later on? What about, you know, get this, get the washing machine, get the, you know, this done, that done, this done. If only I had this, you know, projection, projection. And I think that steals away your life really, or worrying about yesterday and um, or worrying about tomorrow, you've only got today and I think that's a gift to, 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 to know that and uh, so, but for life in general, you know, 
I'm a lucky girl. I have my health. Um, you know, I've got a lovely family and friends. So, uh, yeah, it's good. You know, there's some crap bits, but, you know, I think... Uh, I think the, the, the best thing for me is to be able to face life on life's terms and uh, being grown up about it. And sometimes I'm not, though. I'm a big baby. And I just want to put my head in the sand and, uh, and not face it, really. But, um, mm. I think that's where yoga's come in for me. That uh, when I get into a yoga class and I'm really like uptight and aggressive or fizzy or just tired or just really consumed in my crap, you know, what's going on in the day. And I get into a yoga class and maybe the first 10 minutes, I'm all still like kind of vibrating, I've brought, I've brought the traffic in with me. And then slowly, slowly, it kind of brings me back to where we are and what's important or, or brings things up. Sometimes I'm so out of touch with how I feel you know, because there's so much going on outside. Um, you know, you know. I think that's with everybody, whether it's, you know, get the kids to, to school or what am I doing at work or what am I doing at school, um, you know, other people's problems. It's just an hour of, or, or 20 minutes or 15 minutes just for me to plug into how I feel. And it's, I think it's a really loving thing to do. And uh, so I'm really grateful to the benefit of yoga, what it's given me. It's just like having a little toolbox you know, oh, I feel a bit tired, you know, stand on your head, G you know, get into a, a, a shoulder stand. And that, that's a gift to, to be able to kind of heal yourself in that way. I'm tired. I want time out. Get, get into a prayer position of, of um, you know, child's position on the floor. You know, if you could just go and do that in the toilet, just, just kind of reconnection with the inner self, which I think there's so much outside stimulation in life that we lose our sense of self. I know I do. You know, what I like, what I want. So, oh, here comes Harry. Harry, come here. Hello. Come here. He's just been outside in the garden doing his poop. I have, um, I have a lot to be thankful for because, um, hello. <laughs> um, a lady called Sam Taylor Wood introduced me to yoga. And it was, it was really weird because I was at, um, it sounds really name droppy. But I was at uh, Elton John's party and I was sitting at this table and we were all having dinner and there was like Mick Jagger and Jerry Hall and George and me and we were all sitting around and I didn't really know anybody very well except George and um, he didn't like that croissant. And um, is that no good? I didn't know everybody very well and um, I was feeling a little bit shy and, uh, and I decided that I would speak to the most, uh, the other person that was really quiet and that was Sam and she was kind of sitting next to Mick Jagger so he was in the middle and um, and, she, and she, she started talking to me that she had um, cancer and, um, uh, and and yoga had really helped her and you know and I was feeling really really lethargic at the time you know my body felt really really just ill it absolutely felt ill regardless of my shape or my size I actually felt physically just just I didn't feel I, like I was 26 years old and I felt 80 in certain respects. And I think it was because my lifestyle, the amount of traveling I'd done, you know, emotionally what I'd been through. And, uh, and I thought I got really inspired by what she said. And she told me the name of her teacher and I got in touch with him. And, you know, and thanks, but I had not enough money to, to afford a teacher. And, um, and he started coming around my house. And first of all, you know, this guy, you know, he was in his little shorts and I was very intimidated by it. I thought yoga's only for bendy people. Like most, that's what most people think, and because um, you know, I always felt so clumsy and you know awkward and heavy in my actual deportment, and and as I started to practice it, I remember my first yoga class, I cried because it was, it was almost like, you know, I really believe in cellular memory that in every cell you store some emotion, and you know, whether it's in your shoulders, and when you squeeze something, you kind of let it out, and it was, so. I really, and I got high from it as well. I got this kind of, through the breathing, I felt really, really high, a natural high, which is good. And um, I found it quite addictive. And like my addictive personality, I binged out on it. Literally, I was doing it seven days a week and I had to do it every single day, which was uh, a bit excessive for me, really. And uh, so I was really grateful for Sam for, for showing me it. And 
you know, I went through a few teachers and uh, found Katie. It was great. See, for me, fitness is about having, you know, I've tried everything, you know, to stay in shape. I've exercised down the gym since I was 17 years old, you know, excessively, you know, run for miles, um, you know, tried every diet, tried, you know, boxer size, this size, you know, and it, all of it can work and does work. But for me, being the nature of, you know, my disposition, I think that I, I can only go from my own experience, but I realised it was an inside job and I've got, I had to get a healthy mind first. But I, for me, I, I, I've got kind of a, a very, a nature that gets bored really quick. And uh, so I like to do a little bit of everything and, uh, and the yin and the yang. You know, so I like to run a little bit and then I love cause I, uh, to doing yoga to pacify my nature because I can get a little bit uptight and I find that it really, really helps. Oh, food. Yeah. You know, I'm, you could call me a, a happy foodie because I've, you know, it's no secret, I've suffered from raging eating disorders, you know, for the last oh, 10, over 10 years, I think. But, I, you know, I don't know when it started. It probably could have started when I was, you know, from, from birth. I don't know. I, I'm coming to believe it was like... Um, just something I was born with, actually, you know, a kind of an addictive personality of some sort. And uh, I chose food as my primary, really. And, um, and, and, and certain kind of events might escalate it. And, and, and I, I think it's a progressive illness unless, it, you know, you can uh, come heal it in some shape or form and, uh, or emit powerlessness over it, which was kind of... The best thing that I could do, and that's what I did. I made a powerlessness over my, you know, addiction to sugar. I just, it was huge, and um, and so, so really, I had to start taking. And my eating disorder was about not wanting to take responsibility for my life. Every time I had a problem, I would turn to food. You know, I just, you know, I felt so uncomfortable in certain situations. So you know, I just picked up, and uh, and then I could blame everything on my weight. On, on you know what I'd eaten or what I hadn't eaten you know I could it kind of kept me out of living you know whether when I was suffering from anorexia or over compulsively overeating or being bulimic it was just being out of touch with my feelings and um, and so for me what I you know and everybody is different and this is just what's worked for me is I I, I realized the minute anyone tried to put me on a diet it made me worse it made me more compulsive to overeat it made me want to eat the whole house but now I um, basically eat three meals a day no matter what whether I'm hungry whether I'm you know full whether I'm you know I have and my, my food plan so to speak has the more I've got trust in food because I had a, such an unhealthy relationship has got better and better and better um, you know, I, I don't do any more fatty diets of just eating carbs and not, and no, uh, or just protein or not mixing, um, cutting back. I mean, I realized the minute I started cutting back, I was on my way to a binge. Um, so I just keep it really regular because I am hypoglycemic as well. So I really monitor my sugar levels and, um, and just keep it all nice and steady. So in the morning I have a, people are very surprised how much I do eat now. I have a very, you know, a big bowl of porridge, muesli style thing with fruit in the morning, um, you know, and milk. And it, and it doesn't have to be skin milk. It can be semi skin milk, full fat if there's not, you know, I'm not frightened of fat at all actually. And, um, but this is just for me. And, you know, my, my lunch is, whether it be potatoes, chicken, fish, you know, it can be grilled, it can be fried, really. I don't, I avoid white flour, you know, but it's not to say I'll never have it again. This is what I'm comfortable at the moment. You know, I wouldn't eat a potato like a year ago because um, I thought it would make me fat, which is crap um, for me. And, you know, some occasionally I eat red meat, you know, occasionally I eat chips, even chips, and I didn't think I could do that. I know it sounds mad, but before I would just, if I had one chip, I'd want to eat the hat, you know, I'd want to eat two plates of chips. I could never just have a normal portion. And it was kind of relearning those eating behaviours. And 
And I've kind of just received a little bit of help from friends. You know, every time I felt a little bit, it was, you know, confused about what I should and shouldn't do. And I stopped, you know, looking at those magazines telling me, eat this, eat that. I've tried, you know, I try to, I try to use it uh, productively. I try. But, you know, this is new for me. There's no handbook on how to, 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 to use power and influence. I know that f being famous, you know, it, it's to a degree, you know, people are looking for um, aspiration, you know, inspirational, aspirational figures to, to, and if they can find inspiration from, from what I do, then that's great, you know. At the end of the day, we're all on the same journey, you know, just trying to do the best we can and, you know, and... And, I, and to a degree, I think, well, you know, I'm going to make mistakes and, and trip up. I know I will. And that's part, part of life. But I like to think that, you know, I've come from Watford, not, nothing given to me on a plate, not overly intelligent, I wouldn't say. Not stupid, but, you know, pretty medium. Um, and if you, if you put your mind to something... Um, you know, anything is possible, really. Nearly anything. I think, you know, when you've got problems and, and you can look for, for answers and you feel trapped in your work or your family or your, your relationships and uh, we can strive to fix it, fix it, fix it, but I think the answer lies within you. And you, you take suggestions of people and try and make changes outside, but the change has to start. I believe this to start with yourself, your attitude towards things. You know, a good examples are what Nelson Mandela. He was 25 years in prison, locked up physically in a cell. Now that's either going to send you absolutely mad or it's going to liberate you. You know, it's about your state of mind, whether you, you're going to let... You can, you, can, you can be in the most confined environment, whether it's through work or whatever, but if you just kind of let go and let your mind free. I think yoga in certain, that kind of meditation helps you kind of free yourself from the bondage of self, which is, you know, is a lovely thing. And, uh, and if you're not thinking about it, then that's a gift too. If you're just kind of plodding along, sometimes I think, you know, don't question everything. Don't, you know, I think analysing everything to death is kind of a bore. It's, I, I think the greatest gift is when you become selfless, when you think about other people, when you become a mother, when, you have, when somebody comes far more important than you. That is a gift. When you, you know, thinking about yourself is dull. It really, really is. I have quite an open mind when it comes to life and death. You know, I've read certain books about um, reincarnation and whether it be Buddhism and Christianity and um, I read this autobiography of a yogi and you know I'm really open to the uh, to ideas and I think anything is possible what you know what the hell do I know I'd like to think that you know we can kind of almost be recycled for a piece of energy and whiz around again that'd be great I like that idea rather than that's the end. Um, it's kind of a comforting thought being, I think that we don't think about death enough in Western society. It's kind of a taboo subject. Like when my father died, I mean, part of the problem, as well as dealing with loss, was dealing with, I had no one to talk about it with because it was kind of embarrassing. And, uh, and people, were like, they didn't, we didn't have the kind of language or the emotional kind of technique to kind of, communicate this and um, but whereas in Eastern culture which I think I could really learn from is that you know embrace death and once you embrace it and realize that you know one day I'm gonna die it, it kind of frees you up a little bit the fear part of life it a lot of life's anxiety is fear fear based oh I can't do that because fear and fear actually is greater than reality itself we can like blow it up into you know, this huge thing but uh, I'd like to think that we whiz around again there is kind of some sort of, you know, heaven, who knows. I'd like a little bit more success in, the, um, in my field and maybe go into the film business. And, um, and then after that, you know, do 
probably continue um, with my United Nations work because that really feels the nearest that I can get to being selfless, really. It just takes me out of my own head, my own ego. I like that. And um, personally, uh, find a, a, a lovely, kind uh, man to have a loving relationship with. That would be good. But, um, and, uh, and get a baby in my belly, possibly. But not today. Yeah, not today. Not just yet. And, uh, yeah, that would be, that, that, that'd be enough. The reason why I wanted to do this video is because I think it's really nice to share something. You know, I discovered this and there was a lot of reports on, you know, Jerry's lost weight, her diet and da 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 and there were some paparazzi shots of me doing yoga and I just thought I would love it if everyone just gave this a go, tried it because it's made me feel so good and it can make them feel good. Um, I'd love it if, you know, some little old housewife, grandma was at home and, and, and tried it. You don't have to be that flexible person, you know, because it kind of had that stigma attached to it that, you know, yoga was for like holistic guru, hippie type people. And it's not. I'm, I don't think I'm necessarily like that at all. And, um, and you know, I've, I've felt such benefit from And I'm just, I'm no one special. I'm really not. And, uh, and if, you know, people can get something from this video, then that's great. It really is great.